Tutorial 19, part 5. This is it. This is the culmination of everything we have been doing. So far we have waltzed our way through parts 1 to 4, setting up a chef workstation, a chef node and a chef server. Everything is up and running now and we have just done, uh, a second ago, a chef client to converge, as they call it, our chef client here to our chef server. I'll run it again to show you that there's nothing there. See, nothing's been run, there, there are no recipes associated with this machine whatsoever. So, I'm going to just um, ignore that. I'm going to put that away, I'm going to go back to the Chef Workstation. I'm going to log in on here. This is where we write our recipes, remember? Um, first I'm going to look, I said we would, you know, there's one thing we did during the implementation that causes a security risk and we might as well go and have a look at it. If I go back and go to um, cd slash etc slash ssh slash and we do a more on sshd underscore config you'll remember that in here we uncommented the line permit root login which is a security risk. So you shouldn't really do that. It, it's not the done thing and we need to set that back. Now it'd be the easiest thing in the world for me to VI this file and set that back, but I, I don't want to do that. Um, so on our chef node, we want to set that file back. Well, how do we do things like this? It's the change, it's a change to a configuration file. Well, that's the whole reason we installed chef was to control centrally things like configuration files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto our Chef repo here. I'm going to open up another Chef repo, our Chef workstation. I'm going to open up another terminal. I'm going to sudo and get ourselves logged in on here. I'm going to cd to slash etc, cd ssh, do an ls, and there is an sshd config. Now remember, these were all templated off the same thing. So if I now vi that ssh, whoops, sshd config file, and this isn't exactly the proper way you do this. There's many ways of skinning this particular cat, but uh, this is one way that I'm gonna show you, which is quickly to replace the file. So if I tag down here a bit, there you go. That's what the line should look like. Permit root login is hashed out. So that's effectively a no. So what I'm going to do is copy that file to copy. In fact, I'll do it this way. I'm going to take a copy of sshd config to slash root. Slash. I'm going to take it to there first. If I do a pwd here, we're in our root chef repo. So I'll move it now. And I'll move sshd into chef repo. So if I do an ls in here, we can see a config file. Now we want to set up our recipe. So to set up our first recipe, we want to do a knife cookbook. And you remember earlier on I said they had this whole culinary thing going. So it is chef, and of course what do chefs use? Cookbooks. So we do a knife cookbook create security. Let's call it security. And that's created a cookbook. So if I do an ls now, and we go into cookbooks, and we do an ls, surprise, surprise, there's security in there. If I cd into security and I do an ls, you will see a whole load of files, uh, directory, sorry, attributes, definitions, libraries, providers, recipes, templates. Brilliant. So what I want to do is I'm going to cd into files. I'm going to do an ls and then cd into default and do an ls. There's nothing there. So I'm going to move slash root slash chef repo slash ssh config into here and there it is 
And that's fine. It's got a permissions of 600, so that's fine as well. So now I'm going to go back out of here, now that we have, and back into the main cookbook security directory. So we're back in cookbook security. You will see there is a directory in here called recipes. If I go into recipes, there's a default file. Edit that file. There we go. Now we're going to add to this file, and we're going to add a resource. Now, I'm not going to cover the ins and outs of using Chef in detail, but I will tell you that it runs from resources, you can set attributes, and your recipes can use attributes as variables to change things, and less variables, maybe parameters, let's say, um, as input into that file, and we'll use that in all sorts of different manners. Different resources exist. Um, there's file ones, there's cookbook files, there's templates, there's packages. You can learn so much more about this from chef.io, where we were um, when we downloaded Chef, or on GitHub, there's a massive repository of information, or on the Chef Supermarket, where you can go and look at people's um, recipes as well. Generally, they're saved on GitHub as well, but the, the Chef Supermarket gives you a nice front end. Like I say, I'm not gonna go into Chef in huge amounts of detail. I just wanna get you going with your first recipe. So we're gonna have a cookbook underscore file resource. Where is it? Or where is it to be located on the target system? It's in Etsy, SSH, SSHD underscore config, do. I'm going to put an end in straight away just to make sure I end this. It's the easiest thing in the world to forget to do. Where is our source file? Well, we've put it in the default directory within files, which Chef will know is where it should look for a cookbook file. So we're going to say it is in sshd underscore config. So it will go and look in files default and it will find it. We're also going to say that the mode or permissions for that file should be 0600. So what's this going to do? This recipe is going to say get this file and put it in etsy ssh sshd underscore config if it doesn't exist put it in there if it does exist then you should um, check whether it's the same and if there's differences between them replace it with our source one and then change the permissions to be this if it wasn't that already so that's what this is going to do whoops and that's our recipe. So now we need to upload that recipe to our server, our chef server. To do that, we do knife cookbook upload security. That's simple. Take the cookbook, upload it. Bang. That's it. It's uploaded. We can go and check on that because if we now go to our chef server, here it is. I keep making these windows slightly different sizes. There we go, Let's populate that in there. So go on to our Chef server, I'll do a reload. Okay, if we go to policy, there's a cookbook, security. If I make this, bring this up here, we can look at the content of security. Are there any files? Yeah, there's a file, SSH config. We could download that from here if we wanted. We don't want to do that. Is there a recipe? Oh, there's a recipe. Wow, there's our recipe. So all that happened with that knife cookbook upload. It's there. It's on the server. So we're happy with that. I'll slim that down again. So if we go to our node, back to our node. Oh, let's lock me out. Back to our node, and we do our chef client and we run that
give it a couple of seconds. Compiling the cookbooks has an empty run list. If we do a more etc ssh slash sshd underscore config and we just hit return a few times oh it hasn't changed it well, of course it hasn't changed it I haven't actually told it to link the recipe to the node let me say that again we know we've taken a cookbook we've written a recipe it's in a cookbook and we've uploaded the cookbook to the server and the server knows all about that cookbook and we've just had a look on the server and we can see the recipe. But we haven't done anything to link the recipe to the chef node. So why would the chef convergence have actually done anything? We haven't actually said, you know what, take this recipe and run it on this machine. So we need to do that. Well, that's dead easy as well. So we go back to our workstation here. Here we are in our chef workstation. There's the line where we uploaded the cookbook. Well, now let's knife to link. We're going to use knife again to link this recipe in this cookbook to the chef node. So we're going to say knife node run list add chef node and recipe security. There you go. That's now saying run list security. Okay, let's go back to our chef node now and rerun our convergence. Chef client. Okay, we get a different one this time. It's doing stuff. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Action create, update content. Lovely, let's do a more on this. See what we've got in here. Oh look, there we go. Permit root login is gone. Now, that's great. So what do we need to do next? Well next, because you know that isn't actually active yet, because of course we've replaced the file, but we haven't actually restarted um, SSHD. So we want to add that to our recipe. But as an example of how to use recipes, how to get going using this, that should get you off and running. Now you can go and start looking at uh, the Chef supermarket and starting to read more about Chef recipes and understanding Chef and how you can link recipes together, how you can create attributes. And you know, there's some great resources out there Chef.io has all sorts of stuff about learning Chef. You can download huge quantities of information about learning how to do it and how to basically set this whole thing up. So what I've tried to do in this quick set of videos, short tutorials, is to give you the tools to get you going on a journey now that you can build up those skills and develop your own recipes. I might well add another part in a minute um, just to tidy this up. But thank you so very much. I hope you're getting something out of these videos and you're enjoying these. Don't forget that where we started from originally, the very, very foundation of this, just going back here, is that think of this lab that we've just set up. By all means, set it up on VirtualBox like I have to really start learning and start getting used to Chef. But we did it particularly with a public set of interfaces and a private set of interfaces because that's what you would be presented with on IBM software. So you can take these exact commands, this exact tutorial, and run it for yourselves on IBM software as well. Or when you're ready and you've played around enough in your own lab environment, by all means then take it and start doing it in software. And I may well at a later stage um, do a video doing exactly that as well but thank you very very much I've really thoroughly enjoyed covering Chef and how to use it we're gonna move on to OpenStack I think next um, again to create a lab to start playing with OpenStack or it might be that we're gonna do the Viata one um, hopefully you're enjoying these my name is Eamon Killian 
Thanks very much for watching. I had loose ends and it's been bothering me, so I thought I'd just cover that final piece. So if we, we, we know we've got the file being replaced fine. So if we go back and VI this, our recipe, and we add a, I said you could restart, you know, you could do things with the service. It won't actually have that new SSHD config file active. Well, it's as simple as service SSH do action, Oops. colon restart, because we want to restart it after we replace that file and an end. Again, it's a rudimentary recipe. This isn't, you know, this isn't the, you know, the greatest code, Ruby code. We're not testing is the file there, is the package installed. You know, all of those things would need to be added, but just as a quick starter, we're gonna knife upload that again. We don't have to add it to the run list though, because the run list is already linking the cookbook to the actual, um, to the actual uh, node. We've done that already. So back to our chef node. We want to run this um, chef client again. And this time it's already got the file. So it should say, Meh, I've already got the file. It's the same. There's no need. Wow. Default security line 15 had error. Line 15 had error. Line 15. Service. Ah, oh, service. SSH D. <laughs> of course it did. Right, just re upload it again. It's good to see these little errors. Okay, let's run it again. There we go. So, we can now see. It's restarted the service SSHD. So there you go. That's how you replace the file. You know, this one, as you can see here, the output here was, well, it's up to date. I don't need to do anything. The service, well, I've got to restart it. So I'm going to restart the service. So that really does close it off. A real simple recipe there. Um, I just couldn't leave it hanging out there as, well, how do you start it? And then go off and find out how to you know, restart packages. But that's how you do it. Other actions on packages are uh, colon start, uh, colon um, enable. You know, have a read of the docs. I think it's on, if we go back here to uh, docs, docs.chef, uh, docs.chef. Docs.chef.io. There you go. And you can read all about the different commands and trace this right down to the actual functions and, and what you can run. So thank you very much. I will stop there for the Chef um, Tutorial 19. Hopefully you can now have fun with your lab. You can get used to using recipes. You can write all sorts of different recipes and get yourself comfortable using Chef. And then move on to IBM software and start controlling your virtual machines using Chef and, and configuration manage all of your virtual machines and all your bare metal machines and uh, make life much more simple as a DevOps or a systems admin. Thanks very much. My name is Eamon Killian. Thank you so much for watching.